Hey Chopper, this viewer's not subscribed. Cardi Kaizoku. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. Alright, it has been a hot minute since there has been any Zoro content on my channel. He didn't get any new cards in OP05, so I didn't make any deck breakdown for him in that set. And in OP06, he really doesn't get too much either. But since a whole set has gone in pass and I didn't do a deck breakdown for him in a while, I figured I'd do one. Start from scratch here. Because we could have new players coming, joining us in OP06. So this guide is for any of you new Zoro players out there. I feel like he's one of the best decks to learn the game with. And I think he's still pretty respectable, still pretty strong. Does pretty decently into every leader except for Enel. But anyway, let's take a look at the leader card. Rodonoa Zoro is a red monocolor leader with 5,000 power and 5 starting life. His leader ability reads Dawn times 1 on your turn. All your characters gain plus 1,000 power. Pretty simple, right? So having a Dawn attached to him buffs your entire board for 1k. That means that a playstyle that revolves around going wide, playing small characters that can get benefit from that plus 1k power buff is generally the more stronger way to play Zoro. Especially in the current meta, a lot of decks are more mid-rangey or kind of stally. So being more aggressive seems to work better against those decks because in O3, the playstyle of Zoro is more mid-range. He was the mid-range king, but now that every other deck can do it better, the role that they can't emulate, Zoro can do really well. So let's take a look at the deck list. We have two OP01 Sanji. Sanji is a 2 cost 3k, 2k counter. Fulfills quite a lot of roles in the deck. So he's a straw hat card, searchable by Nami. Not only that, he's a 3k body, which means it only takes one extra Dawn on top of Dawn for your leader ability to make him a 5k attacker. And he's a 2k counter, so great in hand. And then in matchups where your opponent likes to starve you out, Sanji can just use his effect to draw you a card. But let me read what his effect does. Activate main once per turn, you may add one card from your life area to your hand. This character gains plus 2,000 power during this turn, and then you can give this character up to two Rested Dawn cards. So as I mentioned, if your opponent is trying to starve you out not attack your life, you could just activate Sanji to take the top card of your life to your hand. And I know, like, yeah, taking one life card means that you're one step closer to dying, but in those matchups, one card in hand is actually a lot more important than losing one life. And then Sanji himself, in that case, becomes a 7k body, and then with your leader ability active, he becomes an 8k swing. So very strong effect from a 2 cost card. And you can use them flexibly in games where you aren't getting starved out and you're like being attacked constantly. He's great in hand as a 2k counter, and if not, he's great as a body to play. Or OP01 Nami. Nami is a one cost searcher in the Straw Hat Pirates type. You can look at the top five cards of your deck for a Straw Hat Pirates type card, add it to your hand, other than another Nami, but this is the only Nami we run. But yeah, being at one cost 2k, she can be used as an attacker in this deck. On her own, with your leader ability, it costs 2 Dawn to make her a 5k, but we do run cards that buff 1 cost, so you'll often use Nami as a swing anyway, along with her drawing you a card and thinning out your deck, so just a great card all around. Or OP01 Roronora Zoro, otherwise known as Rush Zoro, this Zoro is a 3 cost 5k power attacker, has a vanilla stat line, but also has Rush, meaning he can attack the turn that you play him. With your leader ability active, he's a 6k swing with one extra dawn attached, he's a 7k swing. 7k is the magic number for this deck, so really easy to make the Zoro a 7k swing out of nowhere that your opponent didn't expect. Or OP02, Curly the Dawn. What Curly the Dawn is for 2, on play you can look at the top 5 cards of your deck, reveal a red character with the cost of 1 or less and add it to your hand, and then place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Essentially she's a card that searches like pretty much majority of our deck. You can pick up a 2k counter with her, you can pick up a 3k buffer for 1 dawn with her, you can pick up a 1 cost 3k attacker, you can even pick up Nami. So yeah, in that way, Curly the Dawn is a searcher that can search into another searcher, who can also search into something else. Meaning that you'll keep hand advantage pretty well early on, which is one of Zoro's glaring weaknesses back in 01. So Curly the Dawn helps activate a lot of this deck. And her being a 3k attacker means that with your leader ability active, it only costs 1 more dawn to make her a 5k. Or OP02 Makino. Makino is a 1 cost 0 power 2k counter. Also another flexible 2k counter. A lot of the 2k counters in this deck are multi-purpose and really great. So what Makino does is activate main. You may rest this character up to one of your red characters with a cost of 1, gains plus 3000 power during this turn. 
So yeah, in hand, 2k counter, but for one dawn, you can buff a one cost for 3k. This means uh, Nami swing with your leader ability active becomes 6k. Uh, Sunny or a buggy becomes a 7k. So you can use her both defensively and offensively for one dawn too. Great card and searchable by Curly to Dawn since she's a one cost. Or OP02, Magra. Another one drop, 2k power though. What he does is he gives a red character with the cost of one plus 3000 power during this turn. So it's similar to Makino, but on play, you can only do it once. But yep, yeah, same breakpoints, makes Nami a 6k, makes Buggy a 7k. He even has 1k counter himself on top of that. And then he himself can be buffed by another Magra or a Makino to be a 6k swing with your leader ability active. Or OP03, Buggy. So Buggy is actually another searcher as well, on top of being a 1 cost 3k attacker. But to cram all that good stuff into his card, he doesn't have counter, that his tra that, that's his trade-off, but it's well worth it. So what Buggy does is uh, he can't be KO'd when battling slash attribute characters or leaders, which is not as relevant today as it used to be, as there's not as many other Zoros out there or Red Green Law who are slash attribute leaders who run a lot of slash attribute cards, but still no harm in having that. And then on play, look at the top 5 cards of your deck, reveal it to one red event card and add it to your hand, then place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So he's a searcher for the event cards in our deck. We do run a lot of strong event cards between Radical Beams and Diablo Drums, so always great to have a buggy out. And though we only run 10 events, meaning that we whiff more often than we would like, still no big deal because buggy is a 1 cost 3k attacker, which is a vanilla stat line. We're fine if he just comes out as a body that we can attack with. And yet he's searchable by Curly Dadon, buffable by Makino and Magra, so just great card overall. Or OP03 Marco, 5 cost 6k, 1k counter. Marco is how we compete against decks that like to clear board. On your turn, on play, you can KO up to one of your opponent's characters with the power of 3000 or less. This isn't as relevant as it used to be, because we don't run Gordon in this deck, but you can kill like chump blockers or like searchers that can become attackers, like in the Sakazuki matchup. But the reason we run Marco is mainly for the on KO effect. So on KO, you may trash one event card from your hand, and then you can play this card from your trash as rested. This means you can turn any event card into enough counter that would save Marco. Or even from a KO effect, you can revive him that way. This is especially good in this like removal heavy meta between like Perona using cards like Ryuma or X Drake or Gekko Moria and Sakazuki using cards like Luchi and Absalom. And there's even cards like Gedatsu and Reject now in yellow. Every deck has removal. Marco just has a way to stick on board and just keep pumping out 7k attacks. He's 7k because you get plus 1k from your leader ability. So because of that, I do prioritize him more than Luffy, the other 5 costs in the deck. 2 OP05, Nico Robin. Okay, I mentioned there weren't any new OP05 cards, so I didn't make an OP05 deck breakdown, but this is the one <laughs> OP05 card that we do run. She's a 1 cost as well, so it fits the deck. Straw Hat Pirates as well, 2k power, but what she does is on play, you can KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a power 1000 or less. So without Gordon, there's not too many other targets we can hit, but it does hit a lot of key cards that we sometimes have trouble against. So against like 8 cost kit fortress decks, it hits um, Bedge blockers if they run the Supernova package, if they run the Doflamingo package, it hits Monet, it hits Rosinante, hits Bonnie Searcher, hits Baby 5 Searcher. And then in the Sakazuki and Perona and the Gekko Moria matchup, if they, if they do run Rebecca, it hits Rebecca. Uh, I don't think they run Mancherry anymore, but back when they did, also hits Mancherry. Hits Brulee triggers too. And then she has 1k counter, so not a completely useless card in the hand. And then we can make her into a potent attacker in this type of deck when she's buffed by Makino or Magra. So because of the niche usefulness of Robin, we only run two copies. Two promo Sunnykun. This could actually be Sanji. It's just a vanilla one cost 3k. That is a Straw Hat Pirates type with 1k counter. So yep, yeah, just a good body to just throw onto random turns that you have a Dawn available and you can make him into a potent attacker afterwards. A Magra or Makino effect on Sunnykin with your leader ability makes him a 7k swing, the magic 7k number, so very strong attacker overall. 4 starter deck 1 Brook, he's a 2 cost 3k, so 1 Dawn to make him an attacker, and he's also a 2k counter, also Straw Hat Pirates type, so he's searchable by Nami. What he does on play though is he gives 2 Rested Dawn to either your leader or one of your characters. He's essentially a free card that you can play, right, because if you Play him for 2, put 2 down on your leader, that activates your leader ability, and then that's as if you put 2 down on your leader instead. And then in matchups where your opponent's trying to starve you out, you just want to make your board pump out as much damage as you can, because they're 
probably going to die anyway, right? So doing like 5k minimum swings while they're clearing your board isn't going to get you anywhere. So make them all 7k swings before they die anyway, and then that way you're in a lot better position as they're trying to defend themselves from that turn onward instead of controlling your board and keeping you in check. And then against other aggressive decks or decks that don't try to starve you out, he's a 2k counter in hand, so also another versatile 2k counter in the deck. 2 starter deck 1, Monkey D. Luffy. 5 cost 6k, he has rush and if you attach 2 down to him, he can ignore blockers. We use him more as a finisher in this deck. We prefer Marco for the staying power he has on board to pump out damage, but in a pinch, Luffy can be a 5 cost 7k swing with your leader ability active. And yeah, as I mentioned, for the playstyle of this deck where we try to get your opponent as low as possible, ASAP, playing Luffy at the end to bypass any blockers they set up can help you close out games. I would say that playing Luffy requires the most game knowledge of the other decks in the meta though, as you'll need to know which leaders you can play him out safely against. Because you don't always have to swing with them even though he has rush. So if you know he can be safe, it's sometimes okay to just play the Luffy out and wait a turn to have more Dawn to utilize with his unblockable swing. So say like you're playing against a Sakazuki, he's probably not going to live to see your next turn, so swing with him for 7 as quickly as you can. But let's say you're playing like a purple deck that you know doesn't run like 9 cost Kaido or any way to pop a 5 cost. But you do know they have a bunch of counter events in hand. You could drop him for 5 and then pass the turn. Next turn you'll have 10 Dawn to utilize to make like a, what is it? 16k unblockable swing or OP01 Radical Beam. One of the strongest defensive events in the game. For one Dawn, it counters for 2k. But if you have two or less life cards, it gains an additional 2k power. So it's one Dawn for 4k counter. This is great at keeping you alive. And this is one of the nuances with playing Zoro that you have to get used to. You have to know when to attack, but also when to defend yourself. You do take life pretty liberally as Zoro because you want more resources to pump out at your opponent. But there is a point in the game where you are at risk of dying, and that's when you have to like balance defending yourself while also dealing out damage for lethal. That's probably the hardest thing you have to learn playing Zoro, so, so practice your radical beams. And then also on trigger, it can give a leader or character plus 1k power during this turn. Not as relevant, but sometimes it can save you. But more often than not, if you can leave Dawn up, uh, keep the radical beams in hand. 3 OP06, Gum Gum King Kong Gatling. So the only new OP06 card that I decided to run for 2 Dawn, it buffs your leader or character for 3k power, so kind of like Amaru and Helmblaze. Then if your opponent has a character with 7000 power or more, give up to one of your leader or characters plus 1000 power or more. So it's kind of like, uh, what is that card? Fire Fist? 2 Dawn for 4k power. Except you can kind of split it, you can put 3k on one character or leader and then plus 1k on another character or leader. But it's great as a finisher combined with Diablo Jom or on Luffy. If you do need to do like a 10 Dawn Luffy swing, for lethal, what you can do is Dawn Leader, 5 cost Luffy out, you're left at 4 Dawn left over, right? The 2 Dawn on Luffy to make him unblockable, and then you play Gum Gum King Kong Gatling, and that'll make Luffy into a 12k if they don't have a 7k out, but a 13k if they do. 13k unblockable swing, usually, should win you the game. And then what's also great about this card is it's a Straw Hat Pirates card, so searchable by Nami, and it's an event searchable by Buggy. And then on trigger, you can KO to one of your opponent's characters with the power of 5,000 or less. So great trigger too. It doesn't hit Borsalinos, but everything else, 5k or under, fair game. One starter deck, one guard point, uh, one Dawn event counter, counters for 3k, and then has the same trigger as Radical Beam. I just put this in because I had one slot open and more defense is always good, right? Two starter deck, one Diablo Jom. So one cost event, what it does is on main, you can pick up to one of your Straw Hat type characters or leaders and then your opponent can't activate blocker against them for the turn. So this is also a way to finish games against decks that set up a lot of blockers, which is like kind of every deck except for yellow these days. But yeah, it fits the deck's playstyle where you're pumping out 7k attacks with your weenies or like burning counters out of their hands, getting them low. And then you just finish with the leader swing that they can't block. Uh, Diablo Jom on your leader for a finishing blow lets you attack for 14k. If you happen to have a King Kong Gatling, you can make that into a you can make that into a 15 or potentially a 16k attack, depending on if they have a 7k character out. And then it also has a trigger that lets you KO a blocker with a cost of 3 or less. That isn't too relevant, that usually never comes up, but it's there. And then in matchups where you don't need a Diablo Jom to end the game, you could always use it to revive your Marco. But you don't want this card to brick your hand, so I feel like 2. 2 has been the, the perfect number for me. For starting hands, you'll want OP01 Nami. OP02 Curly Dadon, OP03 Buggy, 
But yeah, just the searchers of our deck. They'll help you replace cards in your hand while also being useful bodies on board. Buggy finds your good events. Nami finds your good straw hat cards. Curly finds everything else. And Curly can even find other buggies and Nami's so you can extend your search chain. But past that, I like to prioritize finding a Marco ASAP. Dropping Marco on curve is pretty strong because he's a 7k attacker every turn after that that is hard to KO. Especially if you find events with Buggy early on, you could either use counter to protect your Marco or if they KO it with an effect or swing like a big number item, revive them for free. Oh, not for free, but yeah, for event discard in hand. But other than that, the deck really depends on your opponent's board state. It's the most like fundamentals heavy deck. There's no like KO effects or like things that your opponent can't avoid. Everything that you throw at them, they can either counter or let die. It's like micro decisions to the max. That's why I feel like this deck is perfect for learning the game. The strengths of the deck are aggression. All your searchers in this deck can become potent attackers. You're pumping out damage every turn. Against decks that are too slow, you can overwhelm them pretty easily. And against other aggro decks, you usually can out aggro them. And you have the defenses to outlive them, usually, between your radical beams and guard point. Consistency. Since we run searchers that can search into searchers, and then the searchers themselves find a lot of the relevant cards in our deck, it's not too often that you brick yourself. I won't say it's. 100% chance that you don't break yourself because since you know card games are like all luck based but given a large sample size I would imagine the number of games where you do brick on Zoro are a lot lower than other decks. The weaknesses of the deck are Enel. Really the only thing keeping Zoro from being more represented in the meta is literally just this one leader. His leader ability letting him heal for one life when he's at one life once a turn makes it really hard for you to finish him off. It kind of like spits in the face of the playstyle of this deck. You do have to rely more on your like Marcos and Rush Luffy's and like developing a board that can push for a lethal swing instead of pushing out all the damage you can early on. But you just have to adjust the way you play. But even then, it's still an uphill battle against Enel. Game of math. So as I mentioned earlier, Zoro is a strong fundamentals heavy deck. All of our 5k attacks, 7k attacks, your opponent in the end can counter out of it. It's not a guaranteed kill on any character on board. Unlike with decks like Blue Black Sakazuki, who if they reduce cost on your characters, there's no way you can avoid that, right? Your characters are going to get bottom decked or KO'd. But with Zoro, if you're swinging at something, depending on the cards they have in hand and the luck that they have, they might have answers to save their board. That's always a risk that you have to mitigate and account for, right? You'll be making decisions like, oh, if I swing 7k at him, is he going to die? Should I make it an 8k? Should I make it a 9k instead? Those decisions matter a lot more in this deck. So that means you do have to understand what your opponent's deck usually runs, right? If you suspect them of not having too many counter in their deck, you could get away with 5k swings. But if you know that they're a deck that runs many 2k counters, then yeah, you just have to adjust your play accordingly. This makes Zoro an incredibly interactive deck, which could be a detriment. So that's my Zoro deck for OP06. I've been having a lot of success with them actually. It, it's just that in a tournament setting, it really just depends on if you can dodge all the Enels that are going to enter or not, which kind of feels bad, but yeah, I can't deny that Zoro is still a strong deck. It does well into Sakazuki, I feel. It does well into Gekomoria, does well into Reiju. Perona does give him a pretty tough time because she can rest a lot of his weenies, but yeah, other than I would say Enel and Perona, you have a pretty good matchup against every other leader. You either go even or you're at an advantage. So, I hope you guys Give Zoro a try if you haven't already. It's six sets into the game. He's been a leader since OP01. So most of you probably have played him by now. But if you're new, I'd give him a shot. Don't write him off just yet. And yeah, enjoy the gameplay. We have Zoro versus Red Purple Law. He's probably EB01 Red Purple Law, which is like quite the menace now. So we'll see how, <laughs> how we fare against it. Play Buggy. Three Marcos on the bottom. Love to see it. He can bottom deck it anyway. So not too sad about that. We want our rushers, I guess. Rush him down. Take Gordon and pass. We can not kill Gordon. He's a 2k. Dang it, Robin. Guess we'll attack with our leader for 5, and then we'll just play two searchers. We'll get rid of one thing, Max. Okay, they took. They the Dawn. Uh, probably another Nami. Refill our hand. Play Nami. Yeah, they do run blockers like Shiraya and stuff, so I think 
Maybe I take the Jambe, right? Because Kong Gatling, he doesn't play too many 7k or higher characters. At least not that I know of. Gordon's not going to give them too much value. Well, I guess he could swing back at our weenies, so... There's that. He might bottom deck our buggy because buggy is immune to slash. There, you can read him. I always tell myself I should hover the cards when I talk over it so that new viewers can understand. Okay, they play Kid and Killer who just swings for five. This is a card I want for my deck. We'll take this though. But yeah, I'm not running EB01 cards. I'll do EB01 decks like a couple weeks into OP06. And then once um, OP06 is out, I'm pretty sure Batsu is going to update the Western side to be OP06 legal. So that's when, that's where I'll be doing all my videos. So I guess with the leader for five, I guess we don't need Robin, so we'll counter. Yeah, I don't want to be at three life, two life, because Kid and Killer will get buffed. Yeah, I think I can just throw my attacks at Kid and Killer. Counter out of hand and not give them cards in hand from their life. With a bottom deck. Buggy, right? What comes out? Shachi Penguin? Yep, of course. Alright, um... Play Nami to start. Okay, we can only take the event. Dawn Leader. Dawn Curly, 5k at Kid and Killer. The counter 1k, we'll play Magra onto Nami. 6k Kid and Killer. Kid and Killer die. Okay, I guess we'll give him a card in hand after all. 7. Take, we'll pass. Um, yeah, our hand is kind of bricked up right now. If Gordon swings 2k, I might have to counter with the Machino just to keep a body on board. I just need the uh, body domination here. Not domination, body advantage. Yep. So Gordon at Nami, we counter 2. Oh yeah, I just shouldn't have done that because they can still attack with the 5k's. That'll kill both weenies and they can still bottom deck. So in the end, I denied them a attack on my life, which would have got me a card. So, my mistake actually. Play Kid, attack early. And Shachi kills Nami. My mistake, my mistake. Oh, they attack our life? What the heck? Did they hear me? Hear me talking about that? And we get another event. Uh-oh. And three of our Marcos are on the bottom, so that's not good. Right, was that this game or am I misremembering? All the games are starting to like meld together in my head, in my mind. Okay, they do play out Purple Law. Blocker Law, I mean. <laughs> but I call them Purple Law. Hmm. So our bodies lived. Play Brook, the 2 down leader. Nami, 3 at Gordon. Gordon, die. Okay, I need 6Ks to go through. So play Makino out. Buff Nami attack. Chachi Penguin for six. Should have done seven. But I do six. I can make Magra a seven, right? Counter two to save him. We'll do seven leader at Shachi Penguin. He should die. Maybe I keep one Dawn up for Radical Beam in case they do some like rush shenanigans and try to kill us. Shachi Penguin dies. We'll do six K Magra into their leader. I think they'll take. Or block counter one. Okay, they took. We'll pass. We have the Diablo Joms to get rid of these two blockers. Or get around them, I mean. Alright, let's see how they try to kill us. And we'll be glad we left Dawn up for Radical Beam. And if I'm wrong, cut that part out. Raiju. Okay, cut that part out. <laughs> oh, they just conceded? Okay, leave that part in. Huh? Why would you concede? You had so much counter. Did he know we have two Diablo drums in hand? But anyway, he could have gotten rid of two bodies and then... No, three bodies and then bottom decked one. So what was the issue? Okay, whatever. Bye. Zoro versus Uta. Aggro on aggro will go first. Uh, Curly is good, but I can't play it on first turn, but we'll keep. Diablo drum would be good against all the blockers to hit 8 cost kid. So with this Luffy. Right, I can just drop him and I don't have to worry about him dying. We'll pass. Okay, they pass two. We'll give him a card in hand. They'll take this for sure. Surely you will. They will. Okay, Curly. Let's take a Nami. 
play Nami. Let's take uh, uh, a Song Shi. Pass. Don leader swing at us for six. Take it. Ooh, Magra. What are you gonna drop a uh, Usop? Pusop? Nami? Okay. We do in the Dawn on the leader. We swing for the six. They take, we'll play Curly. Uh Oggy would be good. We Magra the Nami, swing for six. On a two, oh EB01, no fair. I'm not running Kid and Killer in my deck. Buggy into Kong Gatling. We'll pass. Kong Gatling Diablo Drum is a eight cost kid killer, for sure. Unless he runs Rosinante, but probably not, because he's not a film. Yeah, only thing I add to this deck in EB01 is just Kid and Killer, I'm pretty sure. Still a good card though. Okay, they they have Chopper in hand. I'm a new Genesis and then another Sanji. 6k Nami into Nami. Cannibalism. Oh, add us. We have another Sanji in hand. We'll take that one. Then what? Dawn Leader? Or are they going to just play Brook into something? Leader 5 into Nami. Okay, yeah. Brook into Uta, I guess. Or oh, just another Nami. A lot of cards in hand. Okay, we do have an Uta now. Probably should get rid of the Namis. Dawn Leader. Dawn Curly at Nami. Counter 1. Uh, Dawn Curly at Nami. Countered. Second Dawn Leader, 7 at Nami. Oh, they let her die. I was hoping they would counter more. Okay, I think we'll drop a Makino. No, probably Zoro. Swing 6. Counter will pass. They're at 8. So 1 Dawn Leader and then 7 for Luffy. That means our Zoro will live. Oh, 2 Dawn onto Uta. So no 7 Luffy. Okay, 6k at Zoro, right? That's fine. Our, that means our Curlies can ping more for 1 Dawn. And we will defend Zoro as much as we can. Oh, 6k at us. Crazy! We'll counter this instead of 2 Dawn on leader. We'll take the leader hit. Unless this is at Zoro, in which they tricked me. But yeah, if there's no blockers up, I'll protect Zoro. Seven at us will take. They have a lot of backlights. Okay, they just backlight Zoro. I forgot they could do that. And they backlight a Curly. The Dawn Leader. Dawn Curly, 5 at Nami. Just want to burn all the counters out of their hand so I can kill Kid easier. Right, so that takes care of that. Play Luffy out, 7 at Nami. They can just backlight Luffy. That's fine. Counter 3 to save Nami. Okay, how about another 7 at her? And if that doesn't work, I have another 7 with Makino buggy. Okay, never mind, don't need it. Um, it will swing 5, give them a card in hand. Yep, they take pass. They're going to play 8 cost kid, bring out a Uta. That should be easy. Easy pickings for a Jambe. Yeah, that means they don't have Dawn for a backlight either. If they do play 8 kid. A 5 at buggy. Buggy die. Oh, 10 cost of Flamingo. Didn't expect that. Outer Rushers. Let's just find some then. We'll play Nami. There's a Zoro. Perfect. Zoro out. Dawn leader. Dawn Zoro. Swing 7. Counter 3. Or 4, potentially. 3. I guess I'll use the Magra too. I probably should have got rid of the Curly, but oh well, too late. Makino, Magra 7. Took that one. I think I can afford to play Sunny. Place Curly. Pass with one Dawn up for Radical Beam. If we can protect our Luffy. If it's another 10 cost of Flamingo, we try to end with <laughs> Sunny. Sunny and I'll have one character up. No, he'll be able to kill something. I'll only have Sunny up. Try to find a Russia with Nami then. So we'll counter with Curly. 
if we can. Okay, two Dawn leader, so no 10 cost still Flamingo. And no 8 cost kid too, they won't have Dawn to put on him. Let's see, 7 cost Luffy. In which case, I'll want to keep my Luffy alive, but probably going to be hard against this still Flamingo. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, 9k. And the whiff too to get an Izo. Killer Zoro, that's fine. Please use up all your Dawn. I can defend a 10k. I can defend up to like a 12. Oh, they just backlight him. Okay, never mind. What's 4 Dawn for? Oh, they. I'm invincible to kill our Makino. And then the Flamingo at Magra. We have it then, right? I have two bodies. My voice cracked for some reason. Oh, they attack our leader? Okay. Okay, let's go for the kill. Dawn leader. Uh, let's see. Honey, five. Burn a card out of the hand. Okay, there's 1k. So I need to do 11 and then 13. Or not really. They're probably not all 2k counters. We could just try 9, see what happens. If it doesn't go through, we'll keep Dawn up for Radical Beams. Okay, they take. So Kong Gatling makes... Magra a 7, 8, 9, 10. So I think I have 10k though. I might not have it. We could just play it safe. They are at 0 life. So we'll just attack with Magra for 6. Counter 2, we'll pass and then we should live. And then we'll just unblockable attack for 16. Yeah. Right, that's guaranteed lethal. I shouldn't risk it. <laughs> I didn't have to swing for 10 with Magra. Right, there's no way they win this turn. I have, what, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13k counter. So I only lose if you can make two 18k swings, which is mathematically impossible. Even if they attack me for 10, I'll take it, so they think they can just all in with leader. This one's in the bag. I have the math. Unless he has a way to heal. Actually, another 10 cost Do Flamingo. Yeah, that would stop me. <laughs> but I, I could just try to find a rusher with Nami. But if I don't find one, I could die to two Do Flamingos on board, actually. Ooh, god dang it, why did I have to jinx myself? Okay, Nami, save me. We have Luffy. Don't leader. Play out Luffy. We'll put Hong Gatling on him. Dawn on him. Attack for 12. Should be game, right? Three cards. It's 11k. Whew! That was scary there for a second. Our very last second, I calculated another 10 cost Flamingo in. That might have screwed me over, but in the end, we found a rusher with Nami. Nice. It was all 2k's too. Perfect, perfect. We would have won with the Zoro either way. Okay, bye. Oh, he wants a rematch? Sure. Never mind. Hi. Let's go second this time. All right, let's see if going second matters in this matchup. Okay, they have a Sanji. We'll play Curly. Let's take Buggy. Pass. We could play Marco this time. Try to play around him. Bring us for seven. Oh, they have a seven Luffy in hand. We'll take Robin. Um. So what can we do? We could do Brook Buggy Nami. Or. No, here's what we'll do Buggy first. Red Beam. Then Nami. Loof Beam. Dawn Leader, Dawn Curly. A swing for five. Take Leader six. Maybe they take this one too. No, they counter two. We'll pass. Maybe they don't run a cost kid. They're a Doflamingo. Player, but they could run both. Okay, Dawn Leader at us. Six. Take another one. Four for Nami. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I do want to develop a Marco, but I do have a lot of bodies I can swing with. Probably better to play Marco. So Dawn Leader, swing six. They okay, take. We'll play out Marco. Pass. Yeah, we'll have enough Dawn to make scarier attackers next turn. So, 
just waiting a turn. They could play 7 Luffy now. Then they can't draw. But you have 11 cards. You don't need any more, right? That goes for 5. We'll counter this. Yeah, Luffy into Brook into Usopp might be bad. They can kill our weenies pretty easily that way. In which case, we'll rely more on our rushers. Nami attacks, we'll counter with Curly. Or I could go down to 2. No. Hmm. I'll think about it once they do their attacks. Okay, Luffy first into Uta. Okay, Akos Kid's coming soon. He is indeed coming soon. I'll play Luffy. Probably need it to get around the blockers. So yeah, Dawn Leader. We'll do Marco 7. I think they'll take it. I have one Dawn to spare. I could swing with the Curly. They block Luffy, counter one. Okay, in that case, Curly 5. I thought they were going to take it to protect their kid. Counter one, another Dawn Leader. Swing 7 at their leader. They take, we'll play out a Luffy and pass. So you can't get backlighted. And I'm playing around 8 cost kit. If they don't actually have it, then I'm a fool. They have two backlights, they could kill our Luffy, actually. But then, yeah, that'll be 4 Dawn gone that I don't have to worry about. Okay, so Nami attacks the Dawn. They draw. Dang it, so no 8 cost kit. I guess they could still play it, but. They won't be able to put Dawn on it. Freaking Frick. They got me. 3 Dawn leader at Marco, right? 8k Marco. We'll revive him with a kick course. Hmm. They can do another 8 at him. With the Luffy and then restand him. They do something bigger. Oh, yep. Backlight on Luffy. Oh, 8k at Luffy. Luffy on Luffy Violence, we will counter this. Uh, 2 and a 1. What's the 2 Dawn for? If it was a 10k? Okay, for Bart. Yeah, 10k, I would have let him die. So Bart untaps Luffy. Very nice. We'll do Dawn Leader. Okay, Barto is 3. So Nami, 3 at Barto. Barto saved. Marco 7 at Nami. Okay, they block with Uta. Uh, leader 7 at Nami. I can make two more. 8Ks. Or 7Ks, sorry. Got ahead of myself with the math there. And then with two Brooks, I should live. Okay, Nami dies. Uh, buggy. 4 into Barto. Burn another 2K. I'm fine with that. Ooh, they do it. Okay, rush Zoro, 6 into Barto then. Barto dies. Okay, I have one Dawn to spare for a Radical Beam now, if I need it. They take our Luffy 7. We'll replace Nami with another Zoro, put Dawn. Attack for 7, they could block counter 1. Or do counter 3? Why not block counter 1? I have no more attacks. They counter 4? Oh my god, guy. Dressing me out. So I don't have Diablo Jom and our Luffy's probably gonna die. So we're gonna have to require using math <laughs> for these later stages of the game. Five at Doro. The Doflamingo's coming, I wanna preserve my bodies. Counter two. Preserve all the bodies I can. So freeze leader, Luffy and Marco, most likely. Seven at Zoro, I can counter. I'll need to use one of my radical beams though. And I do think I want to protect them. And cost of Flamingo. Freeze our biggest bodies. I have three attackers at least. And he has no uh, blockers up. Which is a good feeling. Oh, not our leader. Why not? We even get a Magra. Uh-oh. That's a seven. Seven. We'll do seven with the Zoro. See what happens. A counter four. So 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. I can do 10, 10. Or I could do 9 here and 11. Let's do 9 and 11. 
You take. All right, here goes nothing. Magra. Buff buggy and then 11. We won't die and it'll just burn a bunch of cards out of hand, but they had no counter at all. What the heck? Good game. Okay, bye. We have Zoro versus Doflamingo, my worst enemy, mortal enemy since set one. So we will mulligan this. Okay, no turn one play, but I think we have a nicer curve overall. On out. It's not 07 Doflamingo, so not as scary. It's still kind of scary. Right, he counters me, so I have to play a little differently. He has five life, so I have to play a little more um differently. <laughs> Okay, so they prone it twice. Finally found something they like, they counter one. Oh, this is just to attack back into my weenies probably, so we'll play Curly. Robin. Hmm. Just play her out. We'll pass. I just need a body. Okay, two Don. What did they bring out? Jinbei. Uh-oh. We'll take the seven. Right. We'll do five at Jinbei. I'm gonna bottom deck something that's fine. They counter one, we'll play Marco, kill Perona, pass. Yeah, I just need weenies that are hard to kill. Or, no. Characters that are hard to kill that are not weenies. Okay, so they bring out Gecko. Take back a ball from trash. 7k at us, we'll take. We can do 8 at us after if they want. Oh, 6k only. We'll counter two. In that case, it's two down four. Another Perona. Ooh, Duval. Oh, I could use Robin for that. Who is this guy? It's kind of like a mini blocker do flamingo. We have another Marco, so we'll do leader play Marco kill Duval. Mm, might as well just kill. No, we can kill the guy who doesn't have a bottom deck effect. Kill Moria. Then we can K into Jinbei. Let them kill whoever if they want. Or risk using counter for it. Okay, they counter. We'll play a buggy. And Diablo Jam might be useful. We'll pass. Alright, Marcos should be able to kill whatever he plays every turn. 6k again at us. We'll counter 2. 5k at us. We're really going to drop for 7. I guess we'll counter 1. Now we have 0 counter. Okay, they used uh, 7 cost event to bottom deck both of our Marcos. So we're in trouble. Don leader. Let's do Don early. Five at Jinbei. Jinbei dies. Bottom deck or buggy. Play another one then. Maybe whiff on that. That's okay. They haven't taken any life yet, so they'll take the 6k for sure. Yep. Magra onto Robin. Put Don attack for seven. They'll take this. No trigger, right? Oh, they got a red rock trigger. Come on, guy. Okay, Zoro. Down on him, attack for 7. They'll take this. Oh no, they counter 3. We'll pass. Okay, hmm. Oh, EV01 gives him some support too. Yeah, Weevil draws. Then this is a blind leader ability. Oh, they, they probably don't whiff given how many cards they run that are Warlords in their deck. So 7k at Zoro. Corona 5 at Fairly. Okay. This is the part where I kind of die, right? <laughs> Down leader. Okay, yeah, we'll do Magra 3 at Perona. Kills. Do 8 at Gecko. Kills. Uh, we could do 6 at leader. They take. Zoro 7 at leader. Maybe they take. They do? Huh. Maybe I can rush him down. He doesn't play any blockers. But now that I say that, he's gonna play some blockers. Okay, 7 at Zoro. And he whips, finally, on Kaya. What did you get for being blind? 6 on to Robin. Okay, hard cast Boa. Then set up the Dawn to block, but I'm gonna not swing. I'm gonna do unblockable swings. Okay, so 5 Luffy. I guess I can afford to. Put two down Magra? No. We do six. Seven liter makes more sense. Seven liter. They block with Boa. In that case, I don't I don't need to use Luffy right now. But I can afford three down onto Magra to attack for six. We'll do that. Burns a 2k, we'll play Luffy, attack for seven. 
Hopefully they don't have counter for this. They do though, uh oh, we'll pass. Maybe just a big swing on Luffy would have been better. Okay, Perona. So now they know what they're going to bring out. Hopefully it's not a blocker. 8k at Luffy, I cannot stop. The Komori, and then they're going to take back the Boa. Yep, yep, oops. Misplayed that. Could have done that better. There's the Boa back out. Ooh, we do get Zoro. We'll just swing 7 at them, see what happens. Maybe they block. They do. Okay, we'll just do one big Zoro swing. For 10 here. We'll take, and then we just have to make it to the next turn, we win. They take, we'll pass. So they do have 4 bodies at 3 life. They could kill us with Perona, but we just have to hope one of these 3 cards is like a Radical Beam, or like counter at least, that we can survive with. LF1 down up for Radical Beam just in case. But there is a world that we do lose. I think he knows I have Diablo Jam. I picked it up from a, a Doflamingo. I mean from a, a Buggy. So 5k Moria, we counter 1. Now there's no way we lose. It's on them to counter a 14k swing. Doflamingo, 7 into Zoro. Out comes a Boa. We will 7, we'll take. <laughs> we get the Radical Beam even. Alright, if it goes, we'll put buff, domb, one more dawn, I miscounted, but there's 15. We win, nice. Okay, bye. Zoro versus Lakers Crocodile, we'll go first. Uh, would like a curly, yeah, one mulligan. Okay, the, the, <laughs> this hand's worse than the last one. Crap. I should just... Be happy with what I get. Okay, uh, we'll pass. I think we'll just drop Sanji. Or we could drop Zoro. He doesn't have a way to kill it just yet, right? Now, do I need Sanji to give me life? Right? Because that'll um, lessen the advantage of his 9 cost Yamato. But we do get a buggy now. Okay, yeah. Do buggy Sanji instead of Zoro. So leader 5. They take, play out Buggy, okay we whiff on the Buggy, nice, play out Sanji and pass. Or Don, he has no way to kill it, right, I hope. All right, in purple, what can he play? Even in yellow, what can he play at 4? Not Gidatsu. Uh, he could Thunderbolt, but I don't think he runs Thunderbolt. He could uh, Top Knot, purple card, but I don't think he's going to Top Knot. I'm just filling dead space to be honest. Access for 6 will take... Makino. There's a Miss Wednesday. Oh, EB01. Okay, so the ramp when I attack, that is okay with me. I'll just make it hurt this turn. Watch this. Okay, Brook, 2 down leader. And then... Magra on Buggy, attack for 7. They might just block. Actually, they have 2 down. They could play like a... Hell's Judgment or a... Thunderbogwa or something like that. Thunderbogwa doesn't ramp them, right? They have to be at like a certain number of life already. The ramp. Blast Breath? Yep, yeah, Blast Breath. Okay. Activate Sanji then. Ooh, I was expecting to get like a card that I could play out, but... Nope. So we'll attack with Sanji for 7, then leader for 9. I could have done 8-8. Eight, eight. No, this is better, because 9, they cannot Blast Breath that. But they could just block that. But they took. Okay, leader of nine. Just block, right? Or they're gonna blast breath and counter. Oh, okay, they redirected it into Miss Valentine with the Okama Way. Nice card. Dang, I can't even kill Miss Wednesday with the Marco. Unfortunate. But yeah, I should kill his weenies because he can play more Okama Ways. To redirect my attacks into weenies. So just give them less we needs to use. We are at 7 next turn, so I, I do Dawn Leader. Oh wait, they're attacking Buggy. Not save. Now, does he use Miss Wednesday to kill Sanji? They're at 5, 6, they'll be at 8 next turn, so they can play 8 cost Crocodile. But I should make this turn hurt. Uh, but I want to play Marco. I guess we could still play Marco. Yeah, we can. So Dawn Leader. 
play Magra onto Magra. Magra 6. Then they ramp with Miss Wednesday, and then... Let's see what defenses they used. Okay, they just countered 2k. Leader 6. They take, we'll play... Oh, actually, I can get them to 0. No, I'll save my Diablo Drum for that. So Marco, no target. Activate Sanji. Attack for 8. Taking 2 life from Sanji. Let's see if it's worth it in the end. Okay, they block. We'll pass. They play 8 cost Crocodile. They just kill, kill our two weenies here, I think. And then I go with Marco and Zoro. You can even use Makino on this Magra, try to end. And I'll have unblockable if they play a blocker. But they do have, what, 8 cards in hand, so... What happens if I fail? I still have 2 life if I fail. Right, because he has to use his attacks to clear my board. So I think... I think, I think we're good. They missed last words. If I could run EB01 cards, man, that kid and killer card is crazy. Oh, they're attacking our leader? Oh my god, they know something. They know something that we don't know. Okay, they're leaving our Sanji up. That's another 8k attack I can make next turn. I don't think that's wise. So if I counter this, you use your leader to kill Sanji, right? I guess they get Yamato at this point. Yeah, they're at 9, not 8. Okay. Dawn Leader attacks Magra. So 8 costs for a croc. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Dawn Leader. Marco 7 into their leader. The leader ability. They have access to a event now. See what they do with it. Okay, they took. That's a good sign. Another Dawn Leader attack for 7. They're gonna like blast breath this. Oh, they countered 3k with 3 1k counters. That's a good sign too. Play out Zoro. Put Dawn on him. Swing for 7. I think we have it. Okay, he takes. We just stack it on Sanji. Or should we be safe? Anyway, let's attack with Sanji. For 8. I probably should have done it for 9. Okay, yeah, they had no counter. I should have done for 9 because he could have had a, a Blast Breath here, and I would at least burn 2 cards that way. Small Micro Misplay, and then if he ha did have that, I'd have 2 Dawn. I could put Dawn for Makino, make Magra a 6, put Dawn, make a 7, maybe I still had it. Okay, bye. Cardi Kaizoku.